Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of Chess with Constantine. Uh, here we have lesson 2 in our new series Fundamentals of Attacking Play. Uh, through this uh, absolutely free series I hope to um, show you and demystify some concepts about uh, how to go about attacking your opponent in chess. Uh, I think uh, attacking play in chess is very similar to uh, basketball. Uh, you could have um, excellent uh, technique, you could be very good at controlling the ball, keeping the ball away from your opponent, uh, but ultimately to win in basketball you have to be able to score baskets, which means you have to be able to make shots. And it's the same in chess. Uh, no matter how good you are at uh, positioning your pieces or even winning uh, material, ultimately you have to checkmate your opponent's king, uh, and if you don't know how to do that, then you will not, no matter how good you are at other things, in uh, other aspects of the game, you won't be able to get very far. Uh, so the good news is that it's a very exciting way to learn, and we are going to look at another game today. Uh, today's game is um, one that was played in 1896 in Nuremberg, uh, that is in Germany, and we have uh, Janowski as white and uh, Shalop as black. Uh, neither player I'm familiar with uh, in particular, neither is particularly famous, but uh, the game uh, does serve its purpose in, uh, in that it's a very good illustration of uh, what to do and what not to do uh, when you're uh, trying to develop your pieces. So the game began with pawn to d4 uh, and d5. Well, this is the standard queen's pawn opening. Now we have pawn to c4 uh, from white. This is called the queen's gambit, popularized, of course, by the Netflix show of the, under the same name. Uh, but uh, yes, white is offering this pawn, but it's not a true gambit in the way the king's gambit is because uh, many, many hours of study and many, many decades of practice have shown uh, that this pawn, even if it's captured right now, uh, can be recaptured uh, almost freely in the next few moves by white. Uh, so actually capturing this doesn't, uh, doesn't give much of an advantage. Uh, but black does decide to take it. Uh, and then we have knight to f3, uh, which is a standard response, and pawn to c5. Uh, pawn to c5 is not very standard. Uh, here I would note that capturing on c5 does nothing. Uh, and in fact, after if queen takes d1 and king takes d1, uh, black is even sli ever so slightly better here. Uh, but the advantage is so small. Uh, as to be practically non-existent. So really it's very likely to be a draw uh, after this. And if uh, either player wants to win the game, then really there is no uh, reason to go for that uh, capture here. Uh, because it doesn't provide any advantage to either side. So instead white elects to play pawn to e3 with the idea that if black captures, then white captures back. Uh, and it is indeed what happened in this game. Uh, position is completely equal. Uh, white does have an isolated pawn now on the d4 square. Isolated meaning that no other pawn can support it. And isolated pawns can become a target. Uh, however, white does have a lot of compensation in the form of very active uh, bishops. So the bishops can very easily move uh, around the board uh, and uh, the white squared bishop is already targeting uh, the captured c pawn. So actually uh, the fact that this pawn is isolated is not uh, a fatal defect in white's position. In fact position is quite equal and I would even say that the white uh, side is uh, slightly easier to play from the practical standpoint. Uh, so the next uh, move here, we have uh, bishop to g4. It's a very classical uh, move. Uh, 
uh, a very good response here would be to play pawn to h3 um, right away uh, because it would uh, it would pose a question uh, for uh, for black and what what should you do you know what are you going to do about this um, typically you uh, in most cases unless you really know what you're doing you shouldn't allow your opponent to keep your pieces pinned okay but here the white player mr uh, janowski does uh, know what he's doing and he elects simply to capture the pawn on c4 uh, and at the same time develop his uh, light squared bishop and prepare for castling now this is a very good approach it's uh, there's nothing wrong with it and in fact it's one of the better moves that white could make in this position uh, black responds with pawn to e6 uh, which serves the dual functions of opening the dark squared bishop and also reinforcing this uh, this diagonal to prevent any kind of uh, bishop sacrifices on f7 uh, for so for example if uh, you know you can imagine how bishop could take here and if king takes then we have like knight to e5 check and then the bishop will be hanging so in the next move white could capture uh, the bishop on g4 so these kind of tactics are very possible um, they're not that common in the queen's gambit uh, but it's something to be aware of so black was uh, within his rights to play e6 here uh, not only uh, freeing up squares for development but also protecting that important uh, diagonal uh, but white uh, elects to play queen to a4 check right away and usually you don't want to move the queen out early during the opening but this is again one of the exceptions uh, the reason uh, you will see a little bit later so after why after black plays um, knight to c6 blocking this check uh, white continues to pounce with knight to e5 now notice knight cannot move to capture this knight uh, it is not possible simply because uh, the knight is pinned uh, at the same time the knight does attack the bishop uh, that was placed in a what turned out to be a quite awkward square and if the bishop moves uh, then white is also threatening knight takes c6 uh, and if uh, b takes c6 then queen takes c6 with check and it looks like black is already losing the game uh, so <clears throat> to address this uh, black did capture on d4 with the queen so now black is up a pawn and also this move uh, does protect the bishop and indirectly protects uh, this knight so after queen captures on d4 white elected to take here on c6 and we have an intermediate move queen e4 check uh, and after bishop to e3 then uh, not ob obviously not queen takes c6 because the uh, queen will be pinned and will be captured the next move but instead uh, b takes c6 uh, recapturing uh, the piece now you can see that uh, here black is uh, quite a bit behind uh, very noticeably behind uh, in development uh, white uh, you can see that white's uh, pawn on g2 is is under attack uh, so a quite logical move could be uh, to castle uh, and uh, you know defend this pawn and also get your king out of the center however it is not uh, always uh, it's not always uh, desirable uh, to uh, protect every pawn that is hanging um, nor is it necessarily desirable uh, to castle right away uh, so for example here white decided to uh, go a very 
I would say unconventional route and instead of doing um, what would be the conventional wisdom and castling uh, I decided I'm ahead in development and I am going to um, develop another piece played knight to c3 attacking works queen now black can spend another move to move uh, the queen out of the way uh, or to waste uh, a move by uh, capturing the pawn on g2 and this is exactly what black decided to do of course it's a big mistake uh, simply because black doesn't have time to play around with his queen here but okay let's look at this what do you think white should do in this position obviously castling is impossible either way uh, this bishop is preventing castling a rook is hanging so what do you think guys uh, do you think rook to f1 uh, i i would bet that maybe 90 95 percent of you would play something like rook f1 here uh, and rook of rook of one would actually be, uh, I would say, losing um, for white. But there are much better moves in this position. And one of these much better moves is the spectacular, uh, really quite spectacular, bishop to d5. Now look at this. So yes, this move, this uh, pawn is pinned, and cannot capture the bishop. But this this pawn can. So, this is a quite spectacular move. You're saying, I'm going to attack your queen, I'm going to defend my rook. Indirective is this crazy bishop d5 move. And I don't care if you uh, capture it. So, of course, e takes d5. Because otherwise, you, you, I mean, you have no chance otherwise, so you may as well. But, queen takes c6 check forking the queen, uh, the king and the rook. Uh, and after king to d8, we have, of course, queen takes a8 check, uh, king to d7, uh, queen to b7 check, and uh, king to e6, moving up. Uh, obviously, it was possible to capture here, but you don't want to give uh, black the opportunity to, to take the rook with check. So, king to e6. And now we have queen c6 check. Uh, bishop to d6, blocking. And bishop to f4. Really quite spectacular move. So you're saying we do not care about queen takes uh, h1 check. Uh, and even you can give up both rooks here. So after uh, theoretically if black took the rook here. And even took the other rook. Now black is up two rooks. But there is a mate in three moves. After queen takes d6 check. And it goes like this. Uh, here, queen to e5 check, king to g6, and now this is uh, checkmate. So actually it's impossible, even though it looks uh, so tempting for black to take both of these rooks, it's actually not possible uh, to do here. And uh, after thinking for uh, 10 or 20 minutes, uh, black decided to resign the game uh, in this position because really it's quite quite hopeless um, this bish there's, there's really no way of protecting this bishop and uh, the vulnerability of uh, black's position is such that uh, really it's not possible to to uh, stop from being completely crushed so I hope you enjoyed this particular game, which once again illustrates uh, that going after material, and in particular uh, the G2 pawn here, uh, is not uh, the good way to go. 
that uh, it's much important to take care about king safety and uh, it's much more important to develop your pieces so uh, i hope you've learned something and uh, i hope that this game was enjoyable and educational next time we will look at uh, one of the classic games uh, played by uh, botvinnik in 1935 uh, this is one of the one of the famous world champion players um, that was produced in the soviet union uh, and also famous trainer so until next time uh, hope you enjoyed this game and constantine out